obviously, if you've seen, and people have done this, and it's nothing new, we didn't invent it. People have done this. They've looked at the last 150 years and the major scrimmages or major wars or regional wars. And I believe they came to the conclusion that there's only been about a 10 year period in the whole world of history, in the last 150 years where there was actual peace in the yeah. world, meaning the majority of humanity's history and most contemporary history, it's been wars and rumors of wars, not only regional wars, civil wars. Also, we've had the two major wars and it seems like we're heading down another war that may include a lot of nations and including Europe, including the United States, including Australia, New Zealand, in terms of uh, solidarity against what they consider a major power would be Russia and China. Uh, but we'll talk about the leaked documents at the end, David, so we can put them okay, on backstage. Sure. But that sure. certainly has been that certainly has been a big issue uh, over the past, let's say, um, over the past week in terms of what it's been uh, portrayed to the uh, to the to the American people or to the world, and what's really been happening in the war in Ukraine, and, and it's surprising, it maybe not surprising here because we've been talking about the fact that there has been um, um, concerns about U.S. troops in Ukraine. Now it's been confirmed there has been concerns about British military in Ukraine already uh, fighting Russia, and that has been confirmed again. So. Um, it, it's not a proxy war anymore, in my opinion. And now it's become an issue of two superpowers, if you want to consider NATO, US as one, and Russia and its allies. And um, now we know that there's been lies. Now we know that there's been some underhandedness. And, and of course, Jesus talked about lies and, and, and people that are being deceived. And we see that, of course, in our nation. But uh, let, let's talk about this, um, Russia's response to this. Liz Struss, Liz Struss which is the pro former prime minister, she lasted about a minute in the UK, uh, came out and said, well, Ukraine needs to be fast-tracked into NATO. And she still has some pull in the UK, I would imagine. And this has actually unleashed the Kremlin to uh, reveal some of its, um, I guess you would say, its rhetoric has ramped up. No, the Black Sea is not going to be NATO. No, the NATO NATO is not going to take over the Black Sea or Eastern Europe. And um, now this is the Kremlin's response to the UK. Biden's response is, well, I don't even know if he had a response. He's been in uh, Ireland recently getting, you know, barked by dogs and, and, and telling people not to jump. Um, his main concern is, of course, climate change. His main concern is, 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 is inequality of transgenderism. What do we make of this potential war? Uh, or maybe you could say it's already a war that started. As you said earlier, we're already in a war. When you have leaders calling for or ramping up war, other leaders saying, no, we're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna take our, uh, our areas. And you have, you would say, probably the leader of the free world, absolutely lost in his tours, not knowing what's going on, not taking questions. Um, I guess only one person has really made the, 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 the true statement of this is a world war and we need to stop it. And that was Donald Trump. Not that I agree with everything he said, but I agree with him on this. What do we make of this war number one, we'll call it? What do we make of this? Well, the world is on the edge that just a single spark could set all these different events into into a quick burning fire that could not well may not be able to be put out quickly you have china threatening to annihilate taiwan or take it maybe the america will be able to defend against that maybe not but then we would be in a direct conflict with china you've got russia has moved nuclear weapons in up into belarus and mm -hmm. is threatening Finland. We have maybe, I've said this before, death by a, si a thousand cuts of people that have infiltrated America and causing things. Now, I don't know anything, but when you start seeing 18,000 cows being blown up in an explosion at once, you see factory fires burning huge amounts of chickens and 
you see all sorts of infrastructure going wrong and problems and trains and derailments. Like I used to work on the trains and, you know, even when the railroad wasn't that good because it was down in the seventies, we didn't have that many derailments, you know, you, you, we had common sense and, uh, you know, we made sure that you went slow in bad places and stuff, but, but I've never seen all this and we're so everything could just go up in a minute or like I said, we very well may be in a war already. We saw the destruction of the Nord Stream 2, which caused a lot of pollution into the air because of all that natural gas, that carbon dioxide and stuff being put in there. That was major scale, but who blew it up? You know, that's mm. a question. You had, that was property of Germany, a NATO yeah. ally and cost that country billions of dollars with extra heating costs. Plus it was the property of the Russian government. And if, and if they to, were to really determine that was Americans that blew it up, they would, that would be an act of war. That's right. You know, an open avert act of war that they could actually come and they would be justified, you know, in doing it. Not that I would want them to, but, but all this is just, it, it, God says, these people have hooks in their jaws and he's drawing them in. And this is what it looks like to me because it's, it's not go. just one place. It's everywhere. We're seeing the socialism in South America and everything. I think Jay's got something he wants to kick in. Oh yeah, Jay. Yeah. I just wanted to, to, to point out, you know, the, the generation, the adults that went through World War II, they are on the wane. They're the minority now. They are no longer in the in the seats of power. They're they're on the wane. And that memory of the horror of World War II and, and the battles, the suffering, the deprivations, they're out of the uh the psyche of most modern day people that are are in society now. And it just goes to show that men as a whole are doomed to forget. Yeah. Because if this generation tasted the bitterness that those adults had to live through, the, and, and again, we're talking about what we call in, in American history, the greatest generation, the generation that fought World War II, if they have to go through that, they're not made of the of the sterner stuff that generation was. You, yeah. you I just do not see anything good coming from a World War III and I do not see America coming out on top like it did on World War II. The, con the concerning thing to me, too, that I see, too, is kind of like uh, the internal war as, as well, too. It's kind of like, and it's not just the U.S., it's also Israel, where there's civil unrest within the countries, where almost both the U.S. and Israel are kind of almost like on the brink of a civil war itself. To fight a battle on one front is bad enough, but to fight a battle on many fronts, plus dealing with internal civil unrest um, is almost, you know, it's impossible. And I can't help but think of what the Bible says, uh, you know, a house divided against itself cannot stand. And uh, that is probably the big fear. And also we're getting back to what Jay said too, back in World War II and stuff like that, like our parents, work together you know uh they would help one another through things they would barter and exchange things someone would make home preserves and share with others uh we've become such a very selfish society kids are so close i mean kids don't even talk to each other unless it's on these devices nowadays uh, <laughs> they'll be in the same room and they'll still communicate on one of these things uh, it's uh yeah. yeah it's quite concerning where we're at I would like to add another as facet of this. There's actually a currency war going on to de destabilize America and also a whole world currency. The, there's an assault on the American dollar uh, because of the incompetency of our government, but and the rise of the power of China trying to create baskets of currencies, trying to allow people to trade oil in their own currency. 
And plus we're having realignments. Now we have Russia, uh, Egypt has sent 40,000 rockets to Russia to help them. They used to be an ally of ours to a degree after the peace treaty with Israel. So the whole thing is spinning. And it's almost like all you have to do is push the, the lever on the toilet and it's all going to start spinning around. It's all flushing down anyway. Yeah, yep. exactly. Uh, we're closer to war than we most uh, probably realize. And, and Jay's absolutely right about that greatest generation. They dealt with things and they were, some of them were uh, children of those who went through the Great Depression. Those who fought in World War II had grandparents and parents that went through the Great Depression. Some of them themselves went through the Great Depression. So it, it's a, it is a different mentality, isn't it? Um, because we really haven't had, it, the young people have not even, I mean, they hear stories and they think it's like some, you know, some ancient myth. Uh, but there were people that lived through it. They understood what society was about. They understood, as Davies point, community and helping each other. And, and yet many of them turned to the gospel because of the suffering and the difficulties. And, 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 and the world hasn't had things like this 